Hello friends, welcome to this operating system class and now we will see the second part of deadlock avoidance algorithm uh, from the fourth unit. That is if the instances that is resource instances are multiple then we can use banker's algorithm to avoid deadlock. If a system has multiple instances of each resource type then the resource allocation graph is not applicable. Okay, hence we have to use another powerful algorithm to avoid the deadlock, the algorithm is known as Banker's algorithm. The common factors which are used in Banker's algorithm are first one is available. Available means available number of resources, total number of resources available in the system. Okay, and second one is maximum. Maximum which defines the maximum demand of each processes. That is maximum number of resources required for this particular process right and next one is allocation okay allocation defines the number of resources of each type currently allocated to each process currently how many resources are allocated to each process that is indicated by this allocation and next one is need need indicates Remaining resources need for each process for complete its execution. Okay. How do we compute need? Need equal to maximum minus allocation. That is maximum number of resources requested by the process minus allocated resources for that particular process. Right. Sometimes the banker's algorithm also known as safety algorithm because it ensures the safety of the system. Right. So let us see the algorithm one by one. It is having four steps. The first step is initialize step here work equal to available okay and finish of i equal to false for i equal to 1 to n minus 1 here the i indicates number of process number of processes in the system okay see available means the number of resources available number of resources. So the available number of resources that is free currently free resources will be allocated to this assigned to this work and finish of i equal to false that is initially no process be finished okay all the processes are not yet finished hence finish of i equal to false for all uh, i equal to 1 to n minus 1 that is n number of processes are there. And when come to second step, find the process i such that both finish of i equal to false and need of i less than or equal to work. Okay. Need of i means the process which is required further to complete its process. Okay. If both are satisfied, then this particular process that is p i can execute successfully. execute successfully see once the process one executed successfully then what will happen the p1 will release its resources release the allocated resources allocated resources isn't it see once it completes its execution then this process will release the allocated resources hence the allocated resources will be now added into the work which is work currently free resources isn't it right now finish of i equal to true hence it got finished so finish of i equal to true now the step that is go to step 2 this will be repeated until all the process get completes its execution okay when come to 4 if finish of i equal to true for all i if all the processes are get finished that is everyone will mark into true then the system is safe state okay see with this algorithm we try to solve one problem now consider a system with five processes process 0 to process 4 that is p0 p1 p2 p3 and p4 so totally five processes and the resource type are three a b and c here the resource type a has 10 instances and b has five instances 
and C has seven instances. Okay, each resources having um, more number of res uh, instances. The type A has ten. That is A equal to ten instances. B equal to five instances and C equal to seven instances. Suppose at time t zero, the following snapshot of the system has been taken. So the allocation of resource A, B, C for all the processes P0, P1, P2, P3 and P4. Right? Here the maximum number of resources requested for this P1 also given. For all the processes are also given. After allocating the resources, these are available resources. These are available, freely available. So, by using these resources only here, we have to execute all the 5 processes, right? So, from the problem, they gave 3 different types of resources, A, B and C. A is having 10 instances, B is having 5 instances and C is having 7 instances. Okay, let us check these instances. Okay, this is process A type. A type 2 plus 3, 5 plus 2 is 7. 7 resources are allocated and available is 3. So, 7 plus 3 equal to 10. Right? When come to B, here 1, 2 are allocated here and balance is 3. Available is 3. Okay? So, 2 plus 3 which is equal to 5. When come to C, 5 instances are allocated here and 2 instances are free. So, 5 plus 2 equal to 7. Right? Okay. Now, with this information, we have to compute the need. That is, the need of resources for computing P0 further. Okay? How, what is the formula for need? Need equal to maximum minus allocation. So, these are the maximum number of resources requested for completing this P. From these, these are allocated resources. Right? So, what is the resources are further required for completing this particular P0? Maximum minus allocation. Okay. Maximum minus allocation. Maximum required 7. 7 minus 0 which is equal to 7. Okay. B type is 5. Maximum it requires. Allocated 1. So, 5 minus 1 which is equal to 4. And C type 3 required but allocated is 0. Hence, the required is 3. Likewise, we have to compute the need for all the processes. See, when come to P4, the required maximum uh, requirement of type A is 4 and allocated is 0, isn't it? So, required is 4. When come to type B, the maximum requirement is 3 but allocated is 0, then further requirement is 3. When come to C type, the maximum requirement is 3, allocated is 2, so 3 minus 2 which is equal to 1, 1 re resource further requirement, right? Likewise, we need to compute the need for all the processes. And now let us try to solve this particular problem. So, what is the initialization here? Step 1, work equal to available and finish of i equal to false, okay? Work equal to available. What is the available here? Available equal to 3 comma 3 comma 2. That is type A equal to 3, type B equal to 3 and type C equal to 2. That is the available. That will be assigned to work now. And finish of I equal to false. That is for all the process, the finish equal to false. Okay, this is P0, P1, P2, P3 and this is P4. All the process are not yet finished. Okay, right. Now, let us take this process P0. Our work equal to available. Okay, let us try to execute this particular one. What is the available resources? 3 comma 3 comma 2. Okay, that will be assigned to work. Now, let us check whether need less than or equal to work or not. What is the need for P0? This is the need, isn't it? 7 comma 4 comma 3. Isn't it? So, 7 comma 4 comma 3 is not less than 3 comma 3 comma 2. Okay. See, 7 is greater than 3. 
isn't it? So, this is false. We cannot solve this particular P naught currently. Okay. So, this is false only. Now, let us take this process 1. Process 1 is here. Right. Work equal to available. So, what is the current available resource? Only this one. 3 comma 3 comma 2 that will be assigned to work. Now, need less than or equal to work. We need to check. What is the need of P1? 1 comma 2 comma 2. Isn't it? So, 1 comma 2 comma 2 is of course less than 3 comma 3 comma 2. Isn't it? So, we can easily execute this particular process. Hence, this will be turned to true. Now, what the resources allocated to this particular process? 2 comma 0 comma 0. Isn't it? That will be released here. That will be released here. Okay. So, now that will be added into work. Okay. So, 2 comma 0 comma 0 will be added into 3 comma 3 comma 2. The result is 5 comma 3 comma 2. Now, this is the available resources. Right. Okay. So, this is P naught. P naught not yet finished. P1, we have finished this P1. Hence, this will be turned to true. Right. So, now let us try to solve this P2. Okay. P2. What is the available resource here? That will be assigned to work. 5 comma 3 comma 2. Okay. Now, we need to test whether need less than or equal to work. Okay. What is the need of P2? Need of P2 is 6 comma 0 comma 0 isn't it that should be less than or equal to work what is the current work 5 comma 3 comma 2 see type a requirement is 6 but available is 5 hence we cannot allocate the required resources to this process to hence this is false okay we cannot execute this particular process currently right p2 is waiting for its resource now let us come to P3. Okay. Work equal to available. What is the current work? 5 comma 3 comma 2. Isn't it? Okay. Now we need to test need should be less than or equal to work or not. What is the need for P3? The need for P3 is 0 comma 1 comma 1. That is the need for P3. That should be of course less than or equal to 5 comma 3 comma 2. Isn't it? So, we can easily allocate the required resources for this P3. Now, the P3 got executed successfully. See, once it executes successfully, then it will release all the allocated resources. See, these are the allocated resources. This will be freed from here. Okay. So, this will be added into the available resources. So, 2 plus 5 equal to 7. 1 plus 3 equal to 4, 1 plus 2 equal to 3. So, these are the available resources now. Right? Now, we try to execute this P4. Okay? P4, we need to test um, uh, whether need is less than or equal to work. What is the work here? This is the work. 7, 4, 3. Okay? Whether the need is less than or equal to work or not. So, this is the need for P4, isn't it? 4 comma 3 comma 1 that should be less than or equal to less than 7 comma 4 comma 3 isn't it so we can easily allocate that resource to the process okay hence the p4 can execute successfully hence this false will be turned to true right and the resources which are allocated for p4 will be released now okay 0 comma 0 comma 2 okay so that will be added into the currently available resource. Now the available resource is updated 7 comma 4 comma 5. Okay. This 2 will be added into 3. Then the currently available uh, work is 7 comma 4 comma 5. And now we again come back to P0. Okay. P0 is not yet finished. Isn't it? So this is completed. P1 is completed. Okay. P2 is not completed, but these two are completed. P2, P3 and this is P4. Now we will come back to P0. The currently available resource is 7, 4, 5. Now we need to test whether this available is greater than need or not. What is the need for uh, P0? 7, 4, 3. 
the 7 comma 4 comma 3 is of course uh, less than 7 comma 4 comma 5 isn't it so we can easily allocate these resources for p0 hence p0 now complete its execution okay now the uh, allocated resource of p0 will be added into current work okay so this will be added here what is the current uh, like available resources 7 comma 5 comma 5 isn't it now we will come back to p2 P2 is here. Okay. What is the available resource currently? 7, 5, 5. Okay. What is the need for P2? The need for P2 is 6, 0, 0. Isn't it? So we can easily allocate 6 uh, from this available. We can easily allocate because this is less. Okay. Now the P2 got completes its execution. Then the P2 um, is, uh, resources will be released okay hence the released resource will be added into available resources see now we got the complete all the resources see type a equal to 10 type b resource equal to 5 and type c resources are 7 right and finally we have to write the result okay if the process execution is in following order then the system will be safe. In which order we need to execute the process? First we have to execute P1, then P3, after that P4, then P0, P2. If the process are executing in this order, then there will not be any chance of deadlock. Okay, the system will be safe state. Up to this we have seen the deadlock avoidance part 2 that is banker's algorithm. The banker's algorithm are very much useful if the resources are having multiple instances. Okay, in the next class we will see another important topic from deadlock. Thank you.